Welcome, one and every one, to this week's episode. And it doesn't look like we're quite live yet. Alright, hold on a second. Are we live? Can you guys see me? Yes? Okay, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, you can? Okay. Fantastic. Great. Good news. Thank goodness that I am not suffering from technical uh, difficulties today. But uh, welcome, one and everyone, to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 186. I am, of course, your neighborhood-friendly Oxford here, as always, with my suspenders set to maximum stun. Today is Wednesday. It's a bit early, isn't it? We normally do this show on Thursday, but there is a very good reason for that. And of course, the reason is that tomorrow is Valentine's Day. So, I guess you could call this Oxhorn's special Valentine's Day episode. If you would like to ask me Valentine's Day related questions, if you need tips on romance, so that Oxhorn can help you woo the woman or man of your dreams, I will be happy to assist in any way that I can. <clears throat> As for me, this time tomorrow I will be out on the high seas. That's right, my beautiful wife and I are going to have my relatives watch the baby boy. Little Gavin sadly will not be allowed to come with us. This is going to be mommy and daddy time. And we are going to go on a little boat and go into the middle of the Puget Sound here in Seattle, Washington, where we will be served a five-course dinner and there will be dancing on marble floors. And hopefully the ship won't sink. This is not Titanic, but we will be living as if we were on the Titanic while it was not sinking and while people were living. Yes, a five-course dinner. It's going to be delicious. Now, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it because I hate seafood, and it's all seafood. So the first course will be seafood and bread, so I'll eat bread. Second course will be seafood and rice, so I'll eat rice. Third course is going to be seafood and lettuce, so I'll eat lettuce. Fifth, uh, fourth course is going to be beef, and I will consume much beef. And then the final course is, of course, more seafood, and I can't have that. But anyway, it's going to be a fun time. I am looking forward just to being out there. I, yeah, seafood is the best, says Shuri Lama. Um, I'm glad that you can enjoy it, but sadly, I was not born with the powers to enjoy seafood. Even though fishing is in my family's blood, there's something fishy about seafood. Soderfine says, Darn it, Oxhorn, just as I'm going to sleep, I get the notification... That you went live. Well, I hate I hate to interrupt your sleep patterns. I understand that when the Oxhorn starts streaming, the world starts watching. I can hardly help it. It's just the way things are. Um, and I don't seem to have a glass. Where is my scotch glass? How am I going to be drinking this lovely scotch if I don't have a scotch glass? This is too big. This isn't a scotch glass. Plus, it needs to be washed out. So, here we go. I'm going to wash out my scotch glass by um, pouring out a libation for my homies. To all of those who have passed on, or to all of those who never knew me, and should have known me, because I am that interesting, this is for you, my homies. I wish you were here. Great, it's clean. I can now drink it. This is a big glass for scotch. What on earth is going on here? Shrimp, steak, and bacon and scotch, says Mr. Ray, uh, Ray Ball. Um, I'm, I'm down there with the scotch and the bacon. But the fish? Not so much. Come 
And I'm broadcasting through Firefox today, so hopefully it won't go crazy on me. So for those of you who don't know, I do read your Facebook comments if you decide to use the Facebook comment box on scotchandsmokerings.com. And okay, no new comments, good. But you're more than welcome to use that, and I will see it. Zelda Master 64 says he asks, what kind of microphones do you use? Today I am using a blue snowball. That's what it's called. It's called a blue snowball. No, it's not made of snow. It doesn't really look much like a ball. But it's called a blue snowball. Oh, and it's not blue. It's silver. Weird name, but a fairly decent mic. Alright. <clears throat> so I was gifted by Raloran some amazing cigars last week and I consumed them both they were delicious and I, I on my way home from work I stopped by my P.O. box because I was expecting more cigars but no no I was disappointed lo and behold I open up my box and there were no new cigars so uh, I, I will wear my my disappointment on my sleeve and I will brood inwardly for a period of time while I guilt trip the rest of you into buying me cigars. Until then, I am going to be smoking this fine tobacco pipe with some very cheap but good pipe tobacco. Zalamaster64 says, I'm mean for your machinimas. I use a Sure Beta 58 a for my machinima movies. Raloran says I am in the process of obtaining an interesting cigar. At the moment, you can expect it in a few weeks. Really? Well, I am looking forward to it. If they are anything like the last cigars you sent me, they're going to be delicious because the last ones you sent were amazing. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't wait to smoke the Rocky Patel on camera, <clears throat> but I just couldn't resist. I had it, I think, two days ago while I was working on a new blog post, and it was delicious. I'll have to share that blog post with you all so that you know what fueled the insanity that went into that masterful piece of work. It's on my website, growabeardnow.com, how to grow a beard. It's a how-to guide on growing beards. Many people think that the best way to grow a beard is to just stop shaving. And if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense, right? It's intuitive. How to grow a beard, stop shaving, and your body will do the rest. Well, it's true, but there are tips and tricks, and I did my best to relay those to the viewing several in that new blog post. Interesting. All right, what's this on Twitter? <laughs> All right. So Da Shudi Lama on Twitter says, Oxhorn, this is the love of my life. I can't wait to spend some time with her tomorrow. What do you think? And then he includes a link to an image. Clicking on the link, the love of his life is, of course, bacon. Look, my friend, there is nothing to be ashamed of. That is awesome. Spend as much time with that love as you possibly can. Now, I don't have my pipe tamp tool with me, so instead I'm using a leftover beaker that Raloran sent me. These are what uh, his cigars came in. And wouldn't you know it, the end of this beaker fits perfectly into my pipe. And it just tamps it down ever so slightly without pushing into the barrel of it. You don't want to crush the pipe tobacco because then it gets packed too tightly. You just want to tap down the top so that it can uh, hold a, a flame. So, um, just to let you know, I am getting over something. I don't know what it was. It's not contagious, so no need to fear. If I cough on you, I promise you, you won't catch anything. It might be due to, I don't know, 10,000 miles separating us or something like that. But more likely, it's due to me not actually having anything worth catching. But I am going to be coughing a little bit just because I do have a little bit of congestion, uh, congestion in my lungs due to allergies. 
Yes, allergies in February. I don't, I don't really understand it myself, but that's what the doc said. So if I cough, that's why. When was the last time I smoked a tobacco pipe on this program? Can still do the smoke rings. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen, even though I have a giant water glass here instead of a nice classy scotch glass, I at least have a vessel capable of allowing me to imbibe this delicious uh, drink. So cheers, bottoms up, and glad you're here. Well, I wanted to get my beautiful wife in here, seeing as it is the day before Valentine's Day, and I wanted her to be able to say hi to you guys. <clears throat> when was the last time she came on the show? I think it's been a while since she's been on the program. Anyway, but she, she didn't want to come on. She's in the other room making me sausage. Yes, for dinner. She is making me some amazing sausage for dinner. That's just the awesome wife that I have. We found this market near my house where they sell grass-fed beef. So, for breakfast, I get grass-fed beef and farm eggs. And for dinner, I get sausage, like fresh ground sausage. I have an amazing wife, I really do. Couldn't have done any better. Baldock says, I haven't tried Nightside. How strong is it? Uh, this is uh, Dunhill's Nightcap. It's a fairly robust pipe tobacco. I'll let you see the cap there. Um, it's meant for rounding off the end of the day. You have a nice glass of wine or a nice little small drink like scotch or brandy. Maybe a little bit of port. And uh, it's meant for just uh, sooth easing into the rest of your evening, soothing away the traumas of the day, sitting in your favorite leather chair, putting your feet up with your beautiful wife, on one side and your beautiful baby boy playing on your other. That's the way these nights should go, right? So uh, yeah, I've got some Dunhill nightcap. It's it's pretty strong, but not too strong. It's, it's still got a nice metal flavor. <laughs> Triple sex says, I'll give you a few dollars if you shaved your beard right now. Well, okay, senior. Uh, <clears throat> no, no, actually I will shave my beard uh, for a million. Completely happy to shave my beard for a million. So if you and your friends want to toss some coins into the kitty, save up a million, and uh, my beard is yours. I'll ship it in a nice big plastic bag and send it to your dorm for a million. Just letting you know. Triple six is a million. All right, I can make that happen. Great. You've got my address. Just drop me a line. I want to see the, what do they, what do they call it, Benjamins? Show me the Benjamins, and I will I'll give you my beard in a nice plastic bag. Right. <laughs> Halbu says, OMG, it's Oxhorn. Now I must skip sleeping and watch this show to the very last seconds. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So glad that you're here, Halbu. Uh, we do this every Thursday night, usually at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific. Uh, today, we're doing it a day early because of Valentine's Day, and I, I will be other, otherwise engaged tomorrow. H Star says I'll give you a million wow gold. Tell you what, give me enough wow gold and then sell it for a million dollars and and I will shave off the beard and ship it to you. If you don't want a plastic bag, I'm happy to put it in a nice uh, glass jar or maybe a tin or a humidor. I'll, I'll put it in a humidor. You can have as much of my beard as you wish. Million dollars. H Star says, isn't that illegal? I don't think so. Is shipping hair illegal? No, I mean, people make wigs all the time, and in order to make a real wig, you got to use real hair. So I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's okay. Slightly weird, though, but... Okay. Oh, man. This is what happens when I get to talking. My pipe goes out.
Interesting. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm reading something else right now. No, no, I should be paying attention to you, and it's... I will, but... Uh, Shitty Lama says you should pickle the beard. Pickle the beard. That's interesting. Don't know if that would make it better? Is that better? Ew. Uh, Party Marty says shipping hair is only illegal if it's attached to a head. Yes, yes, that's true. That's absolutely true. Shipping a head would be bad. I, I'm not encouraging shrunken heads being shipped via the United States Postal Service. Didn't come from me. Halbu says, make it an urn like in Skyrim. I'm pretty sure Skyrim did not copyright the idea of an urn, but... Point taken, I could ship the beard in an urn. That way people would think it was grandma's ashes. Okay. Uh, Halbu says, Oxhorn, sing Raffle Mao song for me. Um, it's one of those songs you don't really sing. It's sort of just Raffle Mao. Do, 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 do. Oh, wait, no, I did Oxhorn's voice for that, so. Do, 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 do. Raffle Mao. Do, 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 do. Ruffle Mao. And that's the song. I just do that for three minutes. I'm pulling that noob with the uberly hacks and the prong. With the what to go, what to what. Roxers, boxers, I'm a go. Hacks. Ruffle Mao. Uh, Triple Sex says, all right, check your donations. I want that beard. It's yours, buddy. If you give me a million dollars, I'm, I'm, I'm publicly saying that. Yours for a million. But I actually don't have donations, so... Do I have donations set up on any of my websites, guys? I don't think I do. Did you find a way to donate money to me? If so, this is news to me. Has there been a way to donate money to me all these years and I didn't know about it? Do I have some sort of phantom bank account floating out in the inter-ethers filled with money that people have been sending me over the years that I just didn't know existed? Triple sec, fill me in here because I'm completely in the dark. I want this phantom money. Just saying. Party Marty says, buy more albums. You mean, you want you want to buy more of my albums? That's great. You are more than welcome to buy as many of my albums as you wish. I do have two albums and a number of singles. You can buy my music at oxhorn.com. Just click on the music tab, and uh, you can find all my music there if you wish. You can help us find that audience. Why not email your friends right now? Let them know about the wonderful music you're enjoying right here. <laughs> Radio Disney, Radio Disney. Com. Happy music Radio. Com. Uh, Wolf Donald says, uh, What server are you on? I just started playing WoW again. I'm on the Silverhand server, Horde side. I don't play a whole lot anymore, but I do log on every now and then to film my movies. And I also have a guild on that server that you're more than welcome to join. Anyone can join it. It's called the Invisible Pink Unicorns. Halibut says, Raffle Mal, one of your singles? It's actually in one of my albums. You can buy the album um, Oxhorn Brand Music. That's the name of the album on Amazon or iTunes. And uh, my, my song Raffle Mal is included in that album. Rallerin says, he wrote a book? Why, indeed I did. Thank you for mentioning it. This is, of course, my novel, The Tale of Chloron Hastings, a hardcover paperback or an ebook, an epic fantasy adventure novel meant for young adults or adults equally. Uh, your children and or yourselves would enjoy it immensely. Uh, 85,000 words. It is not short, but it is a thrilling and gripping adventure every page of it. Chloronhastings.com, ladies and gentlemen. Chloronhastings.com. Ooh, no, it's not Thursday, says Epic Runt. Uh, no, it's not. It is the day before Valentine's Day, and I didn't want to do the show on Valentine's Day for obvious reasons. So I'm doing it a day early, and I'm so glad that you guys came here today. I, I don't understand why this player keeps playing for me. But uh, we have a show for you all. Today we are going to start out with Don'ts for Husbands and Don'ts for Wives. That's right, on this program we are all about giving relevant and pertinent advice to young married people 
which is of course why we're reading books that were written in 1913. 100 years ago this year, these books were penned, and I'm sure their advice is just as pertinent today as it was then. Hold on a minute, my old college uh, roommate just texted me. Ah, he's a wise man. Uh, all right, so we shall start with don'ts for husbands, because um, I don't want the women in the audience to think that I'm unfair by starting with women first. Here we go. Uh, don'ts for husbands. <clears throat> don't be unsympathetic, husbands, if your wife's worries seem to you to be trivial. You haven't tried to run a house with tiresome servants and ailing children, and you don't realize what a strain it is at times and how molehills become mountains because there are so many of them piled onto each other. Yes, because that happens often. Molehills get piled on top of molehills. Multiple stack of molehills? And we all have servants, right? The Oxhorn household? Oh, totally. We've got servants out the yin-yang, coming out the wazoo. Uh, you can soon keep, you can soon sweep all the trouble away with a little kindly sympathy, or you can make it worse by refusing to see that there is any trouble. Ponderer says, Ox, what happened to your 720p option? I believe that's the YouTube player you're thinking of. The live stream is lower quality, sadly. My internet connection can't take something a little higher than that. All right. Um, next up. Husbands, don't think that your business worries are ever so much more important. The others are her business worries, and just as real as hers, just as real to her as yours are to you. Okay, so this is good advice to husbands who work and to wives who work on the home. We want to be understanding here. Don't be persuaded, husbands, even if you are unfortunately childless, or if your children have married, to give up your home and live in hotels and boarding houses. Because we can all afford that, living in hotels every night. All the mechanical conveniences and perfect service won't make up for the loss of your own home. With all its imperfections, it's yours. And you can do as you like in it. Ah, oh, that's good. Because we all have the resources to just live in rented homes and hotel, uh, hotel rooms all the time. Hmm. One more for husbands and then we move on to wives. Don't be afraid of lending a hand in the house during a temporary servant difficulty because we all have servants. What the heck? Did everybody in 1913 have servants and a lot of money? Jeez. Don't be afraid of lending a hand in the house during a temporary servant difficulty or if you keep no servant. Okay, there we go. It will do you no harm at all to learn to light a fire or clean a pair of boots. And be sure your wife will have to do plenty of things that she is unaccustomed to doing. That's true. Okay. Well, there we go. Don'ts for husbands. We can now move on to don'ts for wives. Cute little hardcore kitten made it. Thank goodness. Our intrepid moderator for the Twitch TV chat is here. Uh, all right. Well, finish, finish your ICC raid. You have a good one, and I'm just glad you're in the chat. Mr. Wrightball says, start off with start off writing a, a small novel like 60, 60 or 75 pages. Um, oh, he's answering somebody else's question. Got gotcha. you. Breck Torva asks, speaking about your book, I've spent a very long time trying to write my own. Any advice? And Mr. Wrightfall responds by saying, start off by writing a small novel like 75 pages. That is good advice. Um, my only, my, my advice would be, just write. You're going to be tempted to write all of these different outlines and to get sidetracked with, with writing out character dialogues and all of that. I, I, I would say just sit down and force yourself to write and it'll come out. Now, that said... Figure out two things before you start writing, and only two things. Figure out the beginning. Figure out the beginning, how you want to start, and figure out the end. How does the story end? If you figure out those two things, 
a plan for getting there will start to form in your head. And then as you sit down to write the beginning, the rest of it will kind of fall in place as you write. I've written th three novels so far, only one I've published, but every single time I sit down to write a short story or a novel, I, I just figure out the beginning, and I figure out the end, and then I force myself to sit down and write, and the entire middle writes itself. That's the way it works for me. Anyway. Where'd my pipe go? Oh. Ah, there it is. So I wish you good luck. It's, a, it's quite a, 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 a challenge to write a novel. It really is. So I applaud anyone who decides to sit down to do it. Cheers, ladies and gents. Bottoms up on this happy uh, Wednesday evening. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gents, time for Don'ts for Wives. We're done picking on the husbands, and it is now time to pick on the lovely ladies of our lives. We're on the chapter called Jealousy. I'm not going to enrage anyone tonight. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ladies, don't try to excite your husband's jealousy by flirting with other men. You may succeed better than you want to. It is like playing with tigers and edged tools and volcanoes all in one. I think I read this last week because I remember that last line. That's, that's a pretty good last line. All right, wives, don't try too hard to regulate your husband's pleasures. And don't be jealous if they don't always include you. Yeah, he has his, his quiet time activities, and you have your quiet time activities. He smokes a cigar and drinks an ounce of scotch, and you knit, right? right? Wives, don't be jealous of your husband's club. If you are, he will go all the more. If you are perfectly willing for him to go as often as he likes, he would probably rather take you to the theater. Okay. Working on some uh, intermarriage psychology there. I wish they had clubs nowadays like they did back in, back in the day. Gentlemen's club that were actually gentlemanly. Gentlemen's clubs today are not gentlemanly. Let me get that out of the, uh, out of the gate right away. There used to be clubs that gentlemen would go to, social clubs, where you would pay a yearly or monthly fee to be a member of those clubs, and when you would walk through the door, the butler would come and hang up your coat, your umbrella, and your hat, and you would walk into the smoking room, and all of the other club members would be there in their three-piece suits, sitting in lounge chairs by the wood fireplace, smoking their tobacco pipes and cigars, drinking a little bit of the gent gentlemanly, because every good club had a bar, and talking about politics, or horse racing, or polo, or cricket. You know, important things. Or, and maybe there would be a billiard table, and per perhaps a garden with a balcony. You could walk out onto the balcony to look at the garden if you needed some fresh air. Those are gentlemen's clubs. That's the way it used to be. That's the way it should be. But now gentlemen's clubs have been... They've become depraved and debauched. There's nothing gentlemanly about them. It's where men go to act like children. And it bums me out. I wish there were actual gentlemen's clubs these days, but alas. Baldock says those were the days, my friend. I know, I know. I never lived there, and I miss them already. Ooh, Darian Dezode says, I have one similar to that here where I live. They at least bring in a weekly professional shoe shiner every week. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Sh Shudi Lama says, such a place is here in my city. My granddad is a member. It sounds like your granddad is a man of class. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to have to look around the Seattle if I can find one. I know that there's, there's a cigar club that I go to. I'm not a member of it, but I'm invited to their events uh, every couple of months. Uh, it's expensive to become a member to these places. Anyway, this particular cigar club isn't quite as gentlemanly as I would like. 
Um, they don't have shoe shines, and you don't have to dress up to go there. You just show up in your jeans if you want to. So the, the class and the style isn't really where I would like it to, but you can smoke your cigars and talk with other people in the tech field because it's a cigars and technology-related club. I've been there a few times. I think I've tweeted about it. But that's really as close as it gets to where I live. Rallaran says, where did you pro procure those books? Um, I published my novel myself uh, through a couple of services. If you want to publish your novel on Amazon, probably one of the best ways to go about publishing a paperback version is through a company called Create Space. All one word, Create Space. It's a company owned by Amazon. You can upload all of your book content, design your book, and publish it through Create Space, and then they'll sell it on Amazon for you. Uh, the hardcover, I have yet to find a quality uh, print-on-demand book publishing place that allows you to do hardcover that also sends the book to a major online distributor. So I used a company called lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com, to just create a hardcover version, and I sell it directly through them. As for the ebook, you can use any number of sources to sell your ebook. I use bookbaby.com to sell my ebook, and they will publish the book to both Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, any number of online retailers, if that answers your questions. That's right, I didn't finish, I didn't finish the, oh, where did you buy the advice books? Right, here I go off on a tangent. Uh, I bought these from a, a shop called Fireworks here in Seattle. I think they have it in most major malls. But let me finish Don'ts for Wives. I kind of got distracted. Uh, some of these are really bizarre, like, like this one. Wives, don't object to your husband cycling into the country just because you don't cycle. If you can't or mustn't or don't want to, that's no reason for cutting off one of his chief pleasures. Right. Okay, cycling. I guess here in Seattle there are a lot of cyclists, but they're not really, they don't really do it as a pastime. They do it because they're proud of it. But uh, I guess this philosophy can be applied to many things. It doesn't necessarily have to be cycling. Okay. One more. Don't be jealous of your daughter when she grows up because you are afraid you will have to take a back seat to her. Remain your daughter's companion, interested in all that interests her, and nobody will dream of drawing comparisons. She will never put your nose out of joint. Don't be jealous of your daughter's influence with her father. It won't undermine yours if you play your part properly. There is nothing more charming than the fellowship of a man and his budding daughter. Okay. Haven't quite gotten to that phase of my life yet, as I don't have a daughter, so maybe I don't understand. But maybe some of you do have daughters and understand that more than I do. But I was a little lost. Anyway, so that was Don'ts for Husbands and Don'ts for Wives. I'm sure we have all learned something from the fine old year of 1913. Ghoulbreath says, Blah! I almost forgot the show. Well, I am so glad you made it, Ghoulbreath. It's good to see you. It's not fun smoking when you have a bit of a chest cold. Uh, I'm a cute little hardcore kitten, says Ox. My Twitch crashed. I go to your page and I keep hearing the stream from the homepage. I'm sorry your Twitch crashed. It's working all right for me, so uh, I'm going to do my very best to moderate it. Uh, Rabbit Mong, interesting name, says, Who wrote these books? There's no real author on it. Oh. A uh, Blanche Ebut. That's her real last name. E B B U T T. Blanche Ebut. Uh anyway, apparently she is the author. Both of these were written were written by a woman in 1913. 
How's that for the feminine movement? Brad Salone says, where does he read the most? Um, I do read the comments that come in on Twitch, but I also read the comments that come in on scotchandsmokerings.com. There's another chat room there on scotchandsmokerings.com that I do pay a lot of t attention to because many of, many of the uh, longtime fans have speak in that one. Also, I'm reading comments as they come in using the Facebook comment box at scotchandsmokerings.com. So if you prefer to make a comment with your um, Facebook account, you're free to use that as well. Siege47 says, I want to see some smoke rings. Sir, I market smoke rings. I talk about smoke rings. I promise smoke rings. And you shall see smoke rings. Now, these are a little thin because I'm losing flame. There you go. How's that? A few good ones in there. Oxhorn, when are you going to post more machinimas? That's probably asked way too often. No, no, no. I, I never hear that one, my friend. <laughs> no, I do hear it a lot, but it's a, it's a pertinent question. I, look, I'm in the middle of working on an epic movie that I've been working on for admittedly too long. But I do work on uh, movies, and I will continue to publish movies. And in fact, if you have... If you haven't been following me for the past few years, I have made a good handful of movies, which you can see on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash oxhorn, or on oxhorn.com. So if you haven't seen everything that I've made, and I've made over 50 movies to date, uh, go and check out oxhorn.com, where you can watch them all. Shetty Lama asks, when is a classy time to wake up? Probably earlier than I wake up. It's true, I have a habit, a horrible habit, of waking up too late. I, I could probably come up with a lot of excuses. I could blame medical reasons. I could blame all of the work that I do late at night. I could blame insomnia. I could blame all sorts of things. But the truth is, I just don't wake up to my alarm like I should. I would love to be able to wake up at 6 o'clock. That would be my optimal, uh, optimal classy time to wake up. Usually it's more around 7.45 or 8 o'clock, which can sometimes put me in late to work, which I do not want. So 6 o'clock is a good classy time to wake up. Blame the elves, says Goldbreath. That makes sense. It's the elves that keep me up late at night and don't allow me to wake up in the morning. Epic Rent says, Raffle Mao is my favorite. My two-year-old son loves it. That warms my heart. I'm so glad. I'm waiting. My, my boy is eight months old. I'm waiting until he's old enough to kind of understand so that I can start showing him my movies. It'll be interesting to see how he responds because I made them and I'm his dad. So will he laugh or will he be like, oh, dad? But then again, I guess they only start being awkward when they turn into teenagers, right? So for a few years, he'll think I'm cool, right? <laughs> Cheers to your kids thinking you're cool. Greg Hartung and Lepidus and Cute Little Hardcore Kitten and a number of other people in the chat are all talking to me about a movie that Greg and Lepidus have made together and they want me to look at the trailer okay that sounds great why don't you send me an email with a link to your trailer and after the show i will do my very best to watch it okay wow you guys had that link ready great <laughs> um oh it's up on youtube already one minute and 12 seconds that's not too bad well, I, I can't show it off right now because I'm listening to classic music from the 1920s and 30s. 
but after the show, I will do my very best to take a look at it for you guys, okay? All right. Bad Muffin Bad says, I love you. Well, you know what? I get that a lot, and that's cool. I am so glad. Uh, I love you too. From the deepest parts of my black heart. Greg Hartung says, thanks for spreading the word, folks. Look, it's not like I was ignoring you. I wouldn't do that. Because I'm not a jerk. We should do this more often, says Ghoul Breath. Hey, there are limits, my friends. I do have a short fuse some days. Mr. 8 Ball says, back up in episode 80, 181, you said you were 31. Good memory. And you're right, I am 31. Did I say I was a different age? Squeak says, holy carp, the fish. Oxhorn is on Twitch TV. Yes. Yes, I am on Twitch TV. And I am so glad that you are here with me today. This show usually broadcasts on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, but today we're doing it a day early. <laughs> Goldbreath says, oh wait, what's the show number today? Like 192? No, it's 186. I Okay, so I haven't posted the most recent episodes of Scotch and Smoke Rings on scotchandsmokerings.com. I realize that. But they are uploaded to YouTube. I just haven't made them public yet, so it won't take me a long time. Maybe tonight or Friday I'll go through and activate the past few weeks episodes so that you can watch them. Uh, my apologies for being so late. Love that. Net asks a great question, which I actually get asked a lot. How come Twitch doesn't get mad at you for streaming non-game related content? For the obvious reason that I'm Oxhorn. I'm Oxhorn. I can do whatever I want on Twitch TV. They are just so kind to me by giving me this premium account from which I can do this show, and they have been fans of my work for so long that they said, Oxhorn, do your show. We're not going to micromanage you. Make the show about whatever you want it to be about. I, myself, am gaming-related enough for this show to instantly be gaming-related. How's that? Yeah? Yeah, I think that sounds good. Goldbrett says, Weight of Ox is here tonight. What do I have to look forward to tomorrow night? Uh, well, I, there, there are quite a number of things that I could say. <clears throat> Depending on how old you are. Goldbreath, do I know how old you are? You're, 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 you're a teenager, right? All right. Find a beautiful, young, uh, classy lady in your school. Go to school tomorrow with a rose and just ask her out. Say, hello, I do not have plans tomorrow night for dinner. You, I'm sure, do not have dinner plans tomorrow. Here is a flower. This flower is the key that unlocks your heart. Please come with me and I will feed you food and we will regale each other with tales of our previous adventures and have a charming, classy evening. And then you will have something fun to do when I am not uh, entertaining you with my beard. Right? I think that sounds like a plan. Goldberth says, classy? Darn. Hey, come on, man. You you know this show, right? This is a classy show. We keep things above the table, above the board. <laughs> Shocky187 says, top of the morning to you, good friend Oxhorn. And might I say that today is a marvelous day to see you on. A uh, pleasure as always, my friend. Good to see you here as well. Squ Squeak says, is it natural to get the urge to have a glass of Jack Daniels while watching this? I'm sure it may be. I, on the other hand, am drinking scotch. Jack Daniels is a very fine whiskey. Scotch is a Scottish whiskey. So find yourself a classy Scottish whiskey to to drink on the, on the night of the show. Right? That sounds good to me. Cool breath. Goldbreath says, if only my parents would let me. Your parents won't let you ask a girl out on a date? That's fairly innocent, right? It's not like you have evil intentions. It's not like you're being devious in any way. You're just wanting to feed 
and nourish a fellow human being with food. What can be more giving and caring and generous than that on Valentine's Day of all days? Instead of being off in the arms of some vagrant or vagabond, she is out with you on a classy evening dinner. What could your parents object to about that? What would you recommend for a first scotch? Asks Epic Runt. There are a number of really good ones. Lafroig. It's a, it's a weird spelling. L-A-P-H-R-A-I. No, A. O-I-G. H. Lafroig. It's a great scotch. <laughs> Greg Hartung asks a fantastic and pertinent question. Care to give the single guys here, including myself, some sage advice on finding a potential significant other? Indeed. Look, we are in the age of the internet. That's the way it works today. The majority of our online relation, the majority of our relationships are made online these days. Uh, even if some people don't like that, that's just the way it is. The majority of our communication is made online in the form of emails and texts and instant messages and forum postings and social media. It's just the way things are done. So I do not think there should be any shame in finding a potential life partner online. That said, you need to be very careful and you need to do so in a classy way. Also, don't forget your actual school or your workplace or the people that you interact with on a daily basis in quote unquote real life because there is certainly potential there but the world is much larger than your high school playground and the world is much larger than your lunchroom cafeteria so for a greater selection why not try out online but here's the thing if you really want a tip and i know that you hear this often confidence really is the key there's a great article on the art of manliness right now. I think it's either the first or second article. I don't know the guys at the art of manliness. I don't, um, sub I don't subscribe to them. I don't get paid by them. But they have an amazing blog. And if you want to, go to the art of manliness and then read the article that they posted on assertiveness. And in that article, they differentiate between being a weakling and being a jerk. Because there's middle ground. There's the weakling who never says no to anything. He's the quote-unquote typical nice guy. He says yes to everything. He's constantly being pushed around. He's constantly being rolled over. And then there's the jerk who not only is assertive, but he's mean. He's kind of a bully. He says things in a rude way, and he kind of gets a kick out of it. Those are two extremes. The safe ground is right in the middle, and that is called being assertive. Assertive people are, as a natural consequence... Uh, more confident. So, as a nice guy, as many of us probably are, you're going to be tempted to get people to like you by just doing whatever they ask you to do. Don't do that. Instead, make boundaries for yourself. Have a couple of different boundaries and say, all right, I'm happy to help people out, but not at the expense of other people in my family or too much of my own personal time. Or, I'm happy to be gentlemanly and chivalrous to this girl in my class, but I am not going to drool all over her, or stalk her, or give her unnecessary compliments, or make her feel uncomfortable or awkward or weird in any way. I'm just going to be comfortable with myself, comfortable with the chivalry that I have embraced by myself, and just be assertive in my own way. I know there are probably a lot of women right now watching this that are, that are either going to agree or have their own interpretation on this, but just in general, Women are attracted to a man who's comfortable with himself. If a guy is awkward and he's not, he doesn't really know how to believe and he can't have a strong opinion on one side or the other, they're really turned off by that. Which is why we often see so many beautiful women and so many women that have such great potential falling for, for lack of a better word, well, I'm not going to use that phrase. What's, what's, what's a gentlemanly equivalent for that <clears throat> phrase uh, low life let's just call him a low life falling for low lives because the low life is a bit of a bully 
and he knows what he wants at the expense of what everyone else wants. And uh, that that a bit of assertive, assertiveness is, is attractive to them, and so they're they're uh, they're lured to that. One one thing that women often say amongst themselves is, "Why am I never attracted to the good guy? Why am I always attracted to the bad guy? Why are none of the men that I have ever dated good guys? Why do they never treat me with respect?" And it's because they're attracted to confidence, they're attracted to assertiveness, and people who think of only of themselves tend to have those qualities in abundance, but none of the better qualities that the quote-unquote nice guys have, like meekness and tenderness and graciousness and thinking of other of someone else. So the, the fine line is uh, between those two is, is assertiveness. You're not a bully. You champion your own desires, but not at the expense of someone else's desires. You also don't let somebody roll over you. You tell them your opinion. You tell them exactly what you believe. You're honest with them. You're upfront with them, even at your own harm. You know you're going to say something that'll probably make them upset because you have an opinion that they may not like, and you're okay with that. You're going to say it anyway because you're being honest. That's who you are. You're assertive. You will say what you want. That kind of personality, that fellow, is going to be infinitely more attractive to uh, a woman you're pursuing than the meek individual who is constantly trying to give her everything she wants. So, to sum up, be confident. <laughs> Great. I hope it helps. There you go. 18-year-old <laughs> Lefroy says, Epic Runt, that is amazing. If you can get some 18-year-old Lefroy, you will be doing very well. DBs. Saikutsikaiti. Yes, that's the phrase I was thinking of, DBs, and I had to think of something else. Chisbolt said, how does one man become so wise, Ox? Eh. Eh. Part of the set bonus. Bottoms up, ladies and gents. Bottoms up. Cheers. My goodness, is it already 7.56? How, where did the time go? I haven't finished my scotch. I haven't finished my pipe. These hours are going by so much faster. It used to be... Well, actually, I take that back. The very first few episodes I ever did of this program were two to three hours long. It was before I was married. It was before I had a full-time career. So uh, this is how I made money. And then, then they went down to being one hour long each, probably around episode 20 or so. And they've been one hour long ever since, but it just feels like the past few months, the one hour is not enough time. I, I can't get it all in in one hour. <laughs> Goldbrass says, will we see any cute Valentine's photos of you and Nova tomorrow? Maybe. I'll, be, I'll have my camera with me and I'll take some photos, maybe of us dancing or something. And if she approves of any of them, I'll put them up on Facebook tomorrow, all right? Okay. Zephy17 says, I love your beard. It is so awesome. Uh, thank you, good sir. Speaking of which, that reminds me, I just wrote a new blog post on growabeardnow.com. Check it all out, growabeardnow.com, a great place if you want to find products that will help you grow your beard or products to help you groom your beard or just interesting beard-related products in general. But in the blog section of that website, I just posted a new article called How to Grow a Beard. And uh, many of you will probably think that stopping the shaving will, is all you need to do. But in this article, I go way into it and I break it down into a two-year plan. It, t it takes two years to reach your terminal length. Many people don't know that, but a, a beard, it's constantly growing and shedding and grow growing and shedding. But throughout that process, it takes a full two years before the beard reaches its terminal length. And after that, it really doesn't grow much more. Mine, incidentally, is at the one-year mark. Every person has his own different terminal length. I'm going to share the article with you. Here you go. Grow. Whoops. That is the wrong link. My bad. 
I just sent you a link to my own stream on uh, Twitch TV. There we go. Growabeardnow.com. Cute little hardcore kitten has it correct. And I just I just put in a, in a link to the article I wrote. How to grow a beard. It breaks down the beard growing process into a two-year plan. Obviously, the rough bit is going to be the first few weeks. If you can get through the first two weeks, then you can grow a beard. Because the first two weeks are the itchy phase. Every man's got to power through it. It's a little rough. Your face is itching. Sometimes it's red. You really want to scratch it. It's uncomfortable. You're going to want to get that razor out and just shave it off. Resist the urge. Two weeks. You've done a lot of things for 18 years, for 20 years, however old you are. You can give two weeks dedicated to getting through the itchy phase of growing a beard. If you can power through the two weeks, then you have the self-discipline you need to get to the two-year mark. This is the one-year mark for me. I'm hoping very much to eventually get to the two-year mark. If you really want to, I mean, you can say that you have a beard if you're at three months or six months and you've got a nice full beard, then you have truly grown a beard. Um, so I, I encourage you all to get to that phase. Anyway, if you're interested in learning how to grow a beard, growbeardnow.com. Lots of great stuff for you there. That's what I've been working on as of late. Ralloran says Gaunt on last week's show. Yeah, Gaunt had a really great beard last week, didn't he? An old co-worker of mine from California came to the show, for those who weren't there, and showed off his beard. It was great. Shudi Lama says, at what age should you start to grow a beard? I am 15 years old, and it is slowly coming in. Well, then kudos to you. you you're actually beating many people. I have people come to growabeardnow.com and tell me, uh, I'm 18 years old, or I'm 20 years old, and I still don't have a beard yet. It's, it's all about genetics, you know. If you're 15 and you're starting to grow a beard, that's the age I was. My beard started coming in when I was 15. Um, so count yourself blessed. Uh, but some people have to wait until their genetics catch up with them. So if you want, if, if, you, if you're trying to grow a beard and your body just will not produce the follicles, the, the hairs necessary, um, talk to your doctor first, of course, but take testosterone supplements, eat a lot of protein, and then, of course, it doesn't hurt to take beard growth pills, which you will find on growbeardnow.com. And also there's a beard serum that I'm selling there, which you're supposed to like scrub on onto the bald spots of your beard. I don't know if it works or not. So I'm hoping one of you can be my guinea pigs and let me know. Palance420 says, Oxhorn, we miss your inventing swear words videos. Why, thank you very much. They're still all online at youtube.com. I think I'm up to episode... Five of Inventing Swear Words. Actually, the, one of the new movies I'm working on right now is the the successor to the Inventing Swear Words series, In Spirit. So I am continuing to work on it. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it is getting late. It's 8 o'clock my time, and I've got some sausage dinner waiting for me. So uh, I'm going to have to head out here. But before I go, it is time for the smoke ship. So what are your ideas, ladies and gentlemen? What is on your mind? It is a custom for me to blow into existence a ship made entirely out of smoke, a.k.a. A, a, akin to Gandalf, based on your ideas. So let me know what kind of ship I should create, and I will do my very best to do so. A sandcastle, says Tim822. Well, the thing is, a sandcastle is not a ship. So, we need ship ideas. Ship ideas, and I will do my very best to blow a ship. Gulbreth says, A bacon vessel piloted by the duet couples of Ox and Nova and Lacey and Mort, while Stag and Mr. Evil search online for potential dates as the ship sails through a sea of sweethearts, no, sweet tarts, shooting spiked roses at elves. That is a very creative smoke ship idea, I have to admit. And I'm tempted. That's a good one. Let me see a few more that come through, a, a few more of your ideas. And uh, that's a good one, Goldbreath. I may just have to do that one. Baldock says, of are dancing on a bacon yacht going down a Scotch-filled river while lots of cupids are shooting fire arrows at elves, gnomes, and pandas. Can't go wrong there. Murder of pandas? What's not to like? 
a Swedish Viking ship says Mr. Sweden. <laughs> I'm sure you would really like that. I, I that, That's a great idea. I do love the Swedish Viking ships. Mr. 8-Ball says five baby, five baby pandas all sporting gnome skin hats and bacon short and bacon shorts. They jump off of a submarine into a scotch sea to find elves and throw them into a bacon abyss. I like it. Throwing elves into a bacon abyss, not only are they terrorized by the bacon, but it's an abyss of bacon. One more. Chizbolt says an orcish battleship sausage cannons shooting seafood on Tarnassus and eating panda pizzas. It's pretty great. All right, I think I think I like Ghoul Breaths the best. It had quite a lot in there. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Time to do Ghoul Breaths idea. Now watch closely because if you blink, you're going to miss it. It's going to be up there for only a moment. I can't let it hover in the air as long as Gandalf does in The Lord of the Rings. Whoa! Did you see it? I hope you didn't blink, because if you did, you completely missed it. But right before your eyes, for the very briefest of moments, was a bacon vessel, piloted by the duet couples of myself and my beautiful wife, and Lacey and Mortus. While Staghorn and Mr. Evil searched online for potential dates, you know, the online dating thing, as the ship sails through a sea of sweet tarts, shooting spiked roses at elves. Right? Pretty good. Very nicely done, Gould Breath. I do like it. Tim88 says, gosh darn it, I blinked. Ah, oh, well, that's a bummer. Zephy17 says, bro fist me. Bro fist. There we go. <laughs> Great smoke ship ideas today, everybody, and thank you so much for coming. An entire day early. I know that uh, many of you are waiting for tomorrow. If any of you are online tomorrow night, be sure to hop in here and tell anyone who came to watch the show tomorrow that the, the day changed, of course, because of Valentine's Day. But thank you so much for coming. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I hope you all are too. Be sure to tune in next week. Same Ox time. Same Ox channel. ScotchandSmokeRings.com at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time for episode 187. We are going to have a fantastic time next week. Anyway, thank you everybody for coming. One final smoke ring. Gotta relight it. One final sip. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Bottoms up. And be sure, my friends, to stay classy. <laughs>